Hello, welcome to another Focus of Faith video devotion and memory verse. Hope you've had a good week and excited that you've tuned back in with us. Uh, we're excited about having our services getting back together here soon, especially the service on June the 7th, our first service outdoors. We'll get to celebrate with our graduates. And uh, those of you who are members and friends of Mount Sinai, I hope you'll be able to join us for an outdoor service that day. I want to ask you today, do you know the two most expensive things in the world? Do you know what they are? How would you answer that question? What do you think are the two most expensive things in this world? Well, let me tell you, the two most expensive things in this world are salvation and sin. Salvation because it costs God, His one and only Son, His life. And sin because if you do not deal with it, it will cost you your soul. So Jesus, that's why He came, that's why He lived, that's why He died, that's why He rose again to deal with salvation and to deal with sin. And we have an opportunity to receive the wonderful gift that He has provided for us, what He's done for us. He paid a price that we could not pay because we owed a debt that we could not pay. And I pray that you will understand the seriousness of sin. And here's, here's the key thought today. The way you deal with your sin determines the way God deals with you. Listen to that. The way you deal with your sin determines the way God deals with you. If you're a child of God, here's what happened. The Holy Spirit convicted you of sin and of judgment and of righteousness, and you realized that you needed a Savior, that you couldn't fix yourself. The Bible says that Jesus came to save us from a messed up past, a meaningless present, and a miserable future. So when the Holy Spirit convicted you of your sin, you had a choice. Am I going to believe this? Am I going to acknowledge it? Am I going to deal with it? How am I going to deal with this awareness now that I'm guilty of sin, that I have offended a holy and righteous God, and I'm accountable, and I'm responsible for my sin? And then the good news of the gospel is that God provided the remedy, the only solution to the sin problem is found in the Word of God. It's found in this book. And Jesus Christ is the answer to man's sin problem. And the good news of the Gospel tells us this, that when a man, a boy, a girl, a woman, understands that they have sinned against a holy God, and they confess their sin, they repent of their sin, they acknowledge their sin before God's holiness and confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, at that moment the Bible says you are born again. The Spirit of God comes to live inside of you and you're born from above. At that moment, your sins are forgiven past, present, and future. All your sins that you've ever committed are forgiven at that point. That is called how, that's how God deals with us judiciously and legally. At that moment, boom, you are made right with God. You are declared righteous because Jesus paid the penalty for your sin, but not only did He do that, but He gave you His righteousness. So you are in a right standing with God positionally judiciously, legally declared righteous. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What a great passage. What good news that is. All my sins, past, present, and future, dealt with at one moment at Calvary when Jesus, remember our, our week three memory verse, uh, 2 uh, Corinthians 5, 21, that says, He made Him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. That passage reminds us that Jesus became sin for us. He dealt with our sin. He dealt with our sin. He paid the penalty, paid the price in full for our sins. So at that moment you enter into that relationship, you have two vital relationships with God. One is sonship, the other is fellowship. Sonship means that's when you're born into the family. I was born as a son to Jim and Shirley Trexler. The moment I was born in this world, I had sonship. I was in their family by birth, by the realization that I was their, their son. Okay, that's one relationship we have with God. Two vital relationships. One is sonship if you're a believer. The other is fellowship. And fellowship that we have with the Father can be hindered by sin, unconfessed sins. Our sin was dealt with, Romans 8, 1, through Christ, the moment we got saved, sonship. 
But our sins, our daily sins, that's what we must deal with. And that's what our memory verse is dealing with today in 1 John. It talks, if we confess our sins, S-I-N-S. So, so we're made right with God positionally, but practically on a day-by-day basis, we must deal with our sins. If we do not deal with our sins, the Bible says our communication, our, our fellowship with the Father will be hindered. There'll be a barrier to that, and it will be messed up, and it will be broken in regard to our ability to discern what the Spirit is saying. Not only will we not be able to hear, but we won't be able to receive the blessing and the favor of God because we have unconfessed sin in your life. Let me ask you, do you regularly ask the Holy Spirit of God, who is the illuminator of truth, to to search you for any unconfessed sins in your life? That's something we ought to do as believers on a daily basis. Regularly ask the Holy Spirit to search us and to point out any particular sins. We commit our sins one by one. We don't need to just do a general prayer, Lord, please forgive me for all my sins. No, take the time and ask the Holy Spirit to surface. Lord, forgive me for being greedy. Lord, forgive me for being lustful. Lord, forgive me for being prideful. Lord, forgive me for being selfish. Lord, forgive me for being rude. Call it what it is. Agree with God. Deal with it so your your communication will be restored in your fellowship with the Father. It's a very serious matter that we need to take uh, concern immediately, uh, deal with our sins, and confess them to the Father. That leads us to this week's memory verse. Uh, You see, your sonship is established by birth and your fellowship by conduct. And so when we do mess up, when we do sin on a daily basis, here's how we deal with it. 1 John 1, 9, our memory verse, week 10 memory verse. Catch this. The devil will beat you up with your past. You've got to know the Word of God. Fight him with the truth. That's what Jesus did. Here's the truth about your relationship to sin and how you deal with sin as a believer 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Again, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God not only forgives us, but He cleanses us. If you are still getting beat up by sins you've committed in your past that you've already confessed, That is not the Holy Spirit bringing that up. God has already forgiven you. He's already cleansed you. You don't need to keep confessing that same old sin again and again and again. As the one man said to his pastor, Pastor, I feel miserable. I feel terrible. The pastor said, what's going on? He said, I've done something terrible. I've done something wrong. I've hurt the people I love. And he said, well, have you confessed it to God? Yes, he said, I've confessed it a thousand times. And the wise pastor said, you should only confess it one time and thank him a thousand times for forgiving you and cleansing you. I'm not sure who that is for today right there, but listen, live in the freedom and live in the liberty of the wonderful work, the price paid at Calvary through the Lord Jesus Christ. His blood cleanses us from our sins. Live in that freedom, live in that liberty. Don't live in bondage and don't live in guilt. Once you have confessed your sins, He is faithful. It means every single time. And He's righteous. He will come through and He will do what He says. I hope you live in the liberty of God's forgiveness. So until next time, keep focusing your faith and growing in your faith and living out your faith. And know this, that He is faithful and He is just to cleanse you and to forgive you for all your sins. So live in the sweetest fellowship here on earth with God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the body of Christ, knowing that our sins have been atoned for, our sins have been covered, and we get to live with His peace and His joy because He is the only solution to the sin problem. Hallelujah! What a Savior! God bless you. Until next time. Keep serving the Lord Jesus. Mm